got a semi. Bullpup air rifle. And for those of you that have got a dirty mind, here's a bar of soap to wash it out. Brocock was, until early 2014, a ragtag airgun maker based in Redditch in the UK. They used to make air rifles using all sorts of components, unmatched and sometimes varying in quality. However, what did come out of the Brocock factory was actually quite good. I've had some of the earlier models on test and found them to be bang on target. Brocock always had the promise to step up to the next level and make its mark but it never did. Then, at the Iowa show in 2014, the Diana Group announced that they bought Brocock air guns. Now, the Diana Group also owns Daystate. It owns Breeder and Meraki shotguns, along with MTC. So they kind of know what they're doing in the industry. A massive overhaul of the company was undertaken, along with a premises move. And now we have, 18 months later, the first of a new breed of Brocock air gun, two things remain in the Compato. The look of the skeleton stock and the name. That is it. Everything else about the gun is new. No longer can you compare old Brocock to new Brocock because it's all new. Let's take a closer look. The Compato is a semi bullpup style rifle which is held in an ambidextrous synthetic stock. Starting at the end that goes bang it's threaded for a second stage silencer. However, the barrel is baffled and it really does reduce the crack from this rifle. And that barrel, it's 18 inches in length. The barrel floats above the air cylinder, which is 150 cc in capacity, and it's charged using a probe. And you can use air either from a dive cylinder or a pump. And the charge port on the underside is protected by this rotating collar. On the front of the 150cc air cylinder is a nice, clear pressure gauge. All that is held in unison by the block at the end, which has a surprise on the right-hand side. A three-level power adjuster. But we'll come back to that in a minute. The magazine is 10 shot, and all new, and a fine piece of engineering. Yes, 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 it looks like a Daystate magazine, but it's not. In no way does it function the same. When the loading pin goes forward, it touches this small release button here. And then, the next time the pin is pulled back to charge the rifle, the magazine spins under spring tension and readies the next pellet to be pushed into the barrel. Oh, and the barrel? It's a Walther one. When you pull the trigger, which is sharp and crisp to use, the slingshot system inside bangs on the air cylinder and releases a blast of air to send the pellet down range. Depending on your country and the restrictions placed on it with regards to air rifles, this can vary in power. Here in the UK, mine's set to a maximum 12 foot-pounds. However, if you've got unlimited power, this can go up to around 30 foot-pounds. The safety is just above the two-stage adjustable trigger, and it's resettable. Weight unscoped is 2.7 kilograms, and an overall length of 34 inches. Compatto in Italian means compact, and this little rifle lives up to that name. Mind you, I'm a big guy, and in no way does it feel small. Let's do some testing. Power first, and let's go back to that dial on the side. The Brocock can put out low, medium, and high power. Low power is just that, around 400 feet per second at 150 bar on the charge. With a 15.9 grain pallet, you get 5.65 foot-pounds. That low power level is ideal for back garden plinking. However, still check your backstop because five foot-pounds is enough to put holes in flimsy garden fences. Now, I wouldn't call the medium setting 
medium. I would call that power save as opposed to high. Why? Well, it is only just a little bit lower than high. And out to 15 or 20 yards, whatever you're shooting at, ain't gonna know any different. High power is, well, high. At 150 bar, middle of the charge, you get around 11.4 foot-pounds. So it's a full power hunter. My 2-2 I have here gives me 130 shots from a 200 bar charge. However, the rifle does seem most accurate between 160 and 100 bar. So that's good for you if you're a pellet through the same hole kind of guy. What's the difference in penetration between high power and low power? I'm gonna use these three centimeter blocks of soap, some of which I've taped together, to try and demonstrate the difference between those power levels. Right, let's check our results. High power is six centimeters. Just confirm that on the ruler. Yeah, bang on six centimeters. Medium power to the pellet. Difficult to read upside down, let's just check that. Four and a half centimeters. And low power okay is bang on three centimeters so we're going from six centimeters to four and a half to three centimeters and that's the difference in penetration between high medium and low power and of course at 25 yards through the different power settings your point of aim is going to change we've got high and power save as I said before, which are almost the same. And then we've got low. And the difference between those two is about seven centimeters, give or take my wobbles. Here's the big question you're waiting for me to answer, accuracy. Well, on full power at 25 meters, the rifle is spot on. This is 10 shots, with eight of them making one big hole. Yes, two are off, but I am shooting through a scope cam, and my pellet of choice is the <coughs> Daystate Sovereign pellet, which is actually made by JSB. I did try the new Kaisers, but I just didn't bond with them, so it's the Sovereigns for me. I have a golden rule when it comes to rifles and pellets. I'll give you an example. You wouldn't buy a Ferrari and then put cooking oil in it as fuel because it was a bit cheaper. So if you're gonna buy a really tidy rifle, buy a decent pellet. The ones costing three pounds for 500 in a tin ain't gonna give you my results. And with the right pellet, when you come to load the magazine, you'll actually find that the pellets load a whole lot easier and you'd rather they just dropped in than had to be forced in look how lovely this magazine is the compatto loads from the left and this cutout on the magazine lines up beautifully with the crowning of the barrel 
Now, with the right pellet, the Compatto can reach out and touch targets further downrange. Spinners at 50 metres are possible all day long. And with practice, and I do mean practice mind, a half inch shot at 50 meters is quite possible. This is a half inch 5p coin. I clipped it the first time, second time's a hit. Now remember, to replicate my results, I was shooting off a rest. However, if you don't have a rest and you want to add a bipod to your Compatto, it's very easy because there's a molded Picatinny rail at the fore end of the stock. Also molded in the stock is the stippling, which is on the pistol grip and just at the end of the fore end there as well. If that wasn't enough for you, the shoulder pad goes up and down as well. The rail on the top is dovetail. However, due to the semi bullpup style configuration of the Compatto, if you did not use the supplied rail extender on top, eye relief may be well, a bit tricky as the scope would sit too far back over the cheek piece but I actually think the extender adds to the looks. What are my final thoughts on the Brocock Compatto? This is good, real good. It's worked faultlessly for me for the last few weeks that I've been shooting it and I love the way it looks. In the UK we're not used to having a power adjuster on the side anymore so that is a real treat. It's superbly accurate. And when Brocock said they were gonna bring out something new, by God, they've brought out something new, right down to the magazine design. It is a very well thought out rifle. If I was going to have one, and I wish I did have one, it would be in this exact configuration. I've been waiting two years to see something new from Brocock, and with this, they've come out of the corner of the ring fighting with the first ring of the bell. It's superb.